guys, Amy Moonsong here. Before we jump into the Ten of Wands, I just wanted to create a little bit of a reference point for everybody so that this video makes a little bit more sense. First and foremost, it is designed for someone who's just wanting to learn more about the tarot and they're studying the cards individually, or maybe they did a reading and it came up in the reading and they're not quite sure what it means. This is meant to give you a couple different scenarios or perspectives in which it might appear and what it might be saying to you or asking of you. Second, there is a intention with these videos to be following the wheel of the year astrologically because each one of the major arcana in the tarot correspond to one of the 12 zodiac signs. So for instance, at the time of this video, we're in Capricorn season. Yes, I'm a little bit late. But Capricorn, the whole sign of Capricorn is represented by the devil card in the tarot. Now each one of the 10 decans of each zodiac sign, which separates the three quadrants of 10 degrees equaling 30 degrees in each zodiac sign, which then makes up each day of that particular season, is ruled by, not ruled, but represented by three minor arcana cards. So those three minor arcana cards are assigned to each one of the decans of the zodiac sign, which then is represented by one major arcana card. So the 10 of wands, which is representative of the third decan of the season of Sagittarius, is representing the, the final 10 days of Sagittarius season and it's representing the end of not only the suit of wands in the tarot, but it's representing the end of Sagittarius season, which is then transitioning into Capricorn season. So there's a lot of languaging and conversation around this because in my own personal practice, I've learned the power, the value, and the virtue of this wheel of the year and how if you study these energies and you interact with these energies through the tarot, through astrology, through the seasons, you're able to tap so much more deeply into what their true essence and what their true meaning is and therefore what they really have to teach you in your life. Because regardless of your sun sign astrology, everybody has all 12 of the zodiac signs in their energy. It's, it, it's like it makes up so much of our being and we have individual relationships with each one of these signs even even if your sun sign is in taurus when we're going through sagittarius season you are under the influence of the element of fire it's just your relationship to that energy that's coming up so for example i've always really struggled a lot during the water sign like during the water sign seasons because my relationship to the emotional realm and all of the archetypes that are there or something that I tended to stay away from and be uncomfortable with because I had a lot of fears around them. It wasn't until I started really working with the wheel of the year and really starting to engage these energies more consciously, being willing to say like, okay, I understand that there's a polarity and a, a spectrum between the conscious and unconscious expressions of these energies, and I wanna to start to engage them. I wanna to start to work with them. It's one of the it's a very powerful way to develop your intuition. It's a very powerful way to develop your connection to yourself. And it's a very, very powerful way to get connected to these esoteric systems that have been created to help us understand our own energy makeup and how to navigate that energy, you know, through the realm of the ego, through the realm of the intellect, through the realm of the emotions, through the realm of the body, ultimately just through the realm of, of spiritual energy that makes up everything. So let's go ahead and dive into the Ten of Wands. I'm always trying so hard not to just get too deep into things, but I just can't help myself. So I hope that that was helpful to you guys. I hope that frames this in a nice way. Now let's go ahead and jump into the card. Okay, so 
Here we are, the Ten of Wands. I have a couple different versions of the cards here in this photo just to give you some different variations of what it looks like. Now this is the traditional Ten of Wands that you're gonna be used to be seeing, you know, Rider Waite Smith. There are a lot of different decks out there that give a lot of uh, different subtle nuances to the card. Uh, which I really appreciate. But just sticking with this one for now, we want to remember that at the essence of the Ten of Wands is the root power of fire. This is the suit of wands, which is represents the element of fire in the tarot that makes up the sign of Aries, the sign of Leo, and the sign of Sagittarius. Now the eight, the nine, and the Ten of Wands represents the three decans of Sagittarius, as we talked about earlier. So this is the final one. This is where the rubber meets the road. Number 10 is the number of completion. It's also the number of beginnings. So this is actually where we find out if all of these lessons that we've been learning through Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius, and all of the tarot cards that represent that, are actually going to turn into something tangible for us. Are we going to know how to use our ego in such a way that it works for us? Or that it works against us and the energy that we're looking here is the ability to push through it's the ability to stick something that's very very difficult and intense to stick it out and see it through till the end or to realize that we've taken on more than we can handle and we need to put some things down either way usually some assessment is in order so some of the key words for the time of wants are going to be being overburdened uh, taking on more than your fair share of something, burning the candle at both ends, a lot of hard work without much time to enjoy it, and uh, having to do it all yourself. So again, I think it's important to emphasize that there are definitely times in our life where we need to know how to just put the pedal to the metal and just just get something over with you know sometimes it's like it's like just this long haul maybe you're gonna have to work really really hard on something um, in order to meet a deadline or maybe you're trying to get a degree right maybe you've got a, a family and a job but you're trying to get that that degree so you can move on and have a better life for yourself and your family and it's a little bit more than is sustainable and that's that's what we want to really tap into here is this whatever it is it's not sustainable but again it might be something that you just need to do for a while or it might be something that requires some reassessment so some important questions to ask when this card comes up for you depending on what the question is about is do you need to exercise the power to hold on or do you need to exercise the power to let go so the perfect example for this card that always comes up for me is if you're a business owner you're an entrepreneur and you've put in all of the work to create a business for yourself and it's going well it maybe it's going so well that all of a sudden you are busier than you have more work than you can handle by yourself right which is very indicative of the image that you're saying in front of yourself right now um, there may be a need for you to let go of a certain amount of control in the situation so that you can bring in some employees who can help you do the work now if you're stubborn and you're not willing to release the control chances are you're going to end up burning out you're going to end up you know your business is going to fail because you're going to fail <laughs> because because you're going to you're going to overdo it you're going to end up getting sick you know it's interesting what happens when we get overwhelmed how slowly but surely our other faculties start to just not be as strong as they could so it's going to be different it's going to be difficult to be nice to your customers when you're worn out because you're not willing to take a day off so that you can have somebody running your business for you so you can actually take some time to rest so question number two would be do i need to expand how i'm using my fire energy by asking for help and i guess i kind of already covered that with everything that i just talked about so it sounds a little bit redundant but again um just this energy of not needing to be in control of everything and having the capacity to expand how you're looking at the situation by shifting what you're doing 
Um, the other thing is, are you able to consider reassessing the situation that you're in with the wisdom that you have at this time? So again, if we go back to the business example, it can be really, really easy to get fixated on how you want things to be or how you planned on something to be. And you can be that way so much so, which would be more of like the Leo energy, the fixed fire, that when it's necessary for you to wake up and smell the coffee and make a change, that you're so dug in, you know, like this person with his head down, that you just, you can't see the forest for the trees and you sort of are spinning your own wheels. Now, but if you are able to release that attachment that you have, then it's easier to tap into that mutable fire of Sagittarius. So let's take it a little bit higher. Let's learn something. Let's, um, let's teach something. And let's, let's use our intelligence to see what needs to change. I think another really good example of this card is if you are in a romantic relationship right and you had all these great ideas about the what the relationship was going to be like you have all these great ideas about what this person is you have all these attachments because you know because of what it was like in the beginning but maybe slowly over time you're finding that you have ended up taking on all of the responsibility or that you're the one who's doing all of the work and carrying all the energy of the relationship um, again, because this is a lot of times this is about taking, you know, taking on more than your fair share. So if you find yourself in that situation, you're going to need to reassess, okay, is this just something that's happening right now because my partner is going through a difficult time, you know? Um, is this a, is this a situation where we can have a conversation about, you know, where our relationship is at and how we can each take a little bit more responsibility for bringing the fire and the energy into the relationship? Or do I need to see the writing on the wall and put these wands down and walk away? So I hope that this has given you some perspectives on some different ways that you can look at this card. Ultimately, it's just, it's, it's a check in point for yourself that's letting you know that you do have the capacity to succeed in life. You, you have the strength and the energy to do it, but how you manage yourself has everything to do. You know, you could be destined to reach a goal, right? But you're still required to understand how to reach the goal. And in order to do that, you have to be able to see where you're going and not have your head down, you know, and not be able to see the forest for the trees. So I hope this is helpful for you guys and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.